Alright, so continuing where we left off in our last lesson, we're ready now to go ahead and set up all the information that we need to go ahead and um, but cook out our render. So what we wanted to go ahead and do, since we're going to be using this um, camera view that I already have uh, in the scene here, I want to go ahead and create a new camera. Okay, And I'm just going to go ahead and rename this as our uh, moving cam. This way I can rotate around the model with this uh, and set up all of our lights and stuff and I d will not <coughs> um, mess up the perspective camera which we'll be rendering through. Okay, So we need to go ahead and light our scene here and I'm just going to go ahead and create a V-Ray rectangle light. I'm going to hit control A to go into the attributes of it, turn up the U and V size to 50 because you don't want to scale V-Ray lights. If you scale them, the intensity scales with them. So we just want to make sure that we scale it in the U and V size and the attributes of that light. Okay, Let's go ahead here and move this into place. Go ahead and just move it up here. And we will just rotate it a little bit here. Uh, I can probably even move it a little bit closer here. We'll go ahead and turn the intensity multiplier down to say something like 5. Okay. And I'm just basically trying to rotate that light so that it's going to fit properly. And we'll just hit Control D to duplicate it. And we will move this over as well and just rotate it there. And I'm just trying to make sure that it's actually going to hit the molecular structure here. Okay, we'll go ahead and jump back to our rendering cam, which is our perspective cam. Okay. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to jump into my rendering attributes here. I'm going to set our size, so we're going to be using a custom image size. Now, you can render at any size that you want, but I'm going to render out at 3250. This way I have a very, very large image whenever it comes to render out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit 3250 by 1829 or 1828, um, whatever size there. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to use the V-Ray frame buffer. Okay, Let's go ahead here and take a look at our V-Ray tab. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to be using the adaptive DMC, but I'm going to change the, AI, um, the AA filter type here to 4 for the size. I'm going to go ahead and override the environment just using the same GI texture here. And it's just that Studio G. Um, you can use any image that you want. The indirect illumination, I need to make sure that I turn on the GI. Okay, Our render elements, I need to make sure that I get the right render elements in here so that I have a bunch of different passes whenever it go, um, comes to taking them over to Photoshop. So we want a reflection, a refraction, self-illumination pass. We want a specular pass, a GI pass, and um, let me see here if we want anything else. We don't need a background pass. We can probably keep that bump normals. We want definitely want a z-depth pass. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add all those. Let's go ahead and create a new render layer here. So we're going to call this the ambient occlusion. Okay, we'll go ahead and jump back to the master layer here. Just select everything. Add these to the ambient occlusion layer. Okay, we're going to jump into our hyper shade here. And I'm going to create a. Uh, where is the V ray dirt material here? Okay, we're going to use the V ray dirt material. This is going to be our ambient occlusion. So I don't want the occluded color to, to be black. I want it to be just a little bit lighter than black. 
the subdivisions we can probably go um, maybe 20 okay with the ambient occlusion layer selected just make sure you select your entire mesh go ahead and assign that to the selection okay go ahead and jump back to our master layer and now we're ready to go ahead and render so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to render this out then in the next lesson I'll show you all the images that we had out and we'll begin our work inside of Photoshop compositing those images back together so that we can create our illustration so come on back and we'll go and I'll have everything ready for us to go into Photoshop so come on back